So, meine lieben Damen und Herren, ähm, schönen guten Abend. I'd like to welcome everyone here. Welcome to Mönchengladbach. We would like to welcome you here locally at the Audi Max, especially for this fifth European Summer University of Social Movements. My name is Sonja Taubert and I am Maria Wale. We have participants from 16 European countries as well as African countries like Benin and Mali, for example. Sadly, not everyone could join because of strict visa policies. Can you hear us in the back? Which part did you not hear? Just kidding. We have an interesting schedule ahead of us. We have three speeches to start with. One of us is also organizational. We have set up some infrastructure and we would like to inform you about it. At eight, we will hand over to the French Motivation and we're looking forward to their contribution as well. We also have mus musical input. As you can see, there's a guitar up on stage and we have a lot of Oh, und wir begrüßen heute Abend ganz herzlich den We would like to welcome the head of university Professor Grünewald. We would like to also welcome our mayor Felix Wolfgang Hinrichs from Mönchengladbach and the Professor Birgit Mankopf. I would like to welcome you here. Firstly, I would like to ask Professor Grünewald to take the floor. So, einen schönen guten Abend. Welcome everyone. I hope you can hear me. You can tell me if you can't hear me. I would like to welcome all guests here in Mönchengladbach at our University of Applied Sciences. We're honored to welcome you here and we appreciate the fact that you chose this location to have this European Summer University of Social Movements. Of course, it is a challenge, and we also know that these previous events have taken place in bigger locations and bigger cities, and it is a special honor for us to get to welcome you here after this difficult time in this pandemic as well. And we're excited to have you here, and we love the fact that everyone has shown up so far. I would like to welcome students here. I would like to welcome the guests of this summer university. And I would also like to thank the organization team that enabled this event to take place. Many people have worked together to make this event possible and we hope that this logistics will work out for all of the events that will take place in three days. We've had many people contribute that we may not even see personally. There are workers that work here at the universities. We have students from our university and we have representatives of different organizations. We have ATTAC and the European Network of ATTAC as well, as well as other contributors. You can also look up 
how many NGOs and foundations actually support this organization. And you can see how important this event is and how many people are contributing. We see this event as a big opportunity. And I would like to thank our ASTA. I don't know if anyone's here, but I am especially grateful to you for convincing us to have this event take place here. I need to admit there was quite some discussion around it. And in the end, we saw the opportunities we had and the opportunities there would be for our students. So for everyone, not only our students, but all participants, we see topics discussed, challenges that everyone faces, challenges that move all of us. We see climate change. We talk about the future of energy. We talk about access to education. We're talking to about democracy. We talk about peace and war as well. We talk about health and about food security, which are all important for us as a university and for students as well. And these topics will always also influence our programs that we offer. Something that we want to teach our students is a global perspective. We need a firm democratic understanding and we need our students to be able to defend their perspectives as well and their understanding of democracy. We see, a ch we see climate change, we see scarcity of resources, and we want our students to be aware of them. We want them to have a toolkit to also act sustainably. These are topics that will also come up again and again in many of the workshops and events that will take place, which is why we feel especially lucky to welcome you here and to have this location right here to have this European Summer University. We have serious topics as well, but there are also fun, fa fun events. I mean, all of us are glad to be back out on the street to see people and to have international guests here as well. We know that there will be parties and we know that there will be culture and music because that's also important. We're facing serious problems and serious topics as societies. And with all these problems that our younger generation is facing as well, we would like to also foster a spirit of positivity. And we also need to party sometimes. Therefore, it's important to have a balance of fun as well as serious discussions. So I would like to wish all participants and all speakers a good discussion today and during the following weeks. Thank you for coming. Yeah, vielen Dank. Thank you, Mr. Grünewald. So, the Mayor, please, dear Mr. Mayor, please could you come to the microphone? So, welcome, everyone. So, I'll hold the mic like this for the interpreters. Welcome to München Gladbach. This is a great pleasure. It's uh, wonderful to see how many people of different ages have made their way here to this city. I've been the mayor here for about two years. Things fit together well. Munchen Gladbach and social movement. In 1890, the Volksverein group was founded.
It was a revolutionary popular group at the time. So workers in the textile factories here uh, came together to improve their conditions. We look to the future and we have to deal with our past as well. From today's perspective, I'd say that it's hard to combine sometimes the past with the present. Before, people, so it was, it was actually business people who started it. However, it started a social tradition. Across, across Germany, this group had an effect. Now, we have to have a discourse in our society. We have to look at what sustainability and justice really mean. So, we want peaceful protest. We can't keep consuming at the same rate as we have over previous decades. We need sustainability. We need ecology. Uh, the economy and social aspects to be considered. Here in this region, in Mönchengladbach, we need to change our structure. We need to stop using uh, coal. And it's never been in question. Since the 80s, we've known that we're against the use of coal. It was uh, clear across political parties that we're endangering our homeland and our ecology. So it's hard, you can't miss the effects of uh, coal mining. It affects our groundwater and the way that people live together. So you've chosen a good place to come together. It's not Paris. It's not a major city, but it's a nice, it's a beautiful city. There are hundreds of workshops and seminars at this event over the next few days. I hope you'll be able to come together to learn, to discuss things critically. Also, I hope you can get to know the area. If you're not from around here, you can make new contacts here. That's a very important form of solidarity. It's not just an abstract concept. It's something very concrete. We are facing war today and rising energy prices in Europe. There's a lot of uncertainty for millions of people in Europe and around the world. At this time, we must stress the need for solidarity. I'd like to give you a great example. People have fled Ukraine and we've been housing them here. In Mönchengladbach, more than a thousand people have now been housed. We're not just talking about large centers where people are packed in. We've actually managed to find people who are willing to share a space. Or maybe lower the rent for a property so it can fit with the rules to accommodate people. There's a certain mindset amongst people who live here. If you get to know people in this region over the next few days, Maybe that will change your view of the Rhineland. And please keep that in your head and your heart. I wish you every success for the next few days. I hope you'll enjoy it as well. But I wish you fruitful, uh, critical discussions. And I hope you have nice memories to take away from here. I hope you have a wonderful time here in Mönchengladbach. So thank you very much, Mr. Heinrichs. That makes me want to get to know this town. Well, before we come to Birgit Mankopf, I'd like to bring our head uh, coordinator, Christiana Kuhnrich. Please come to the microphone. The speaker corrects herself, not the telephone. She is the one who has earned a big round of applause, along with many others. Christiana, I'll pass the floor to you. 
Hello. Good evening. I'm Christiana Kuhnrich. I've been working with a big team of volunteers for this European Summer University, ESU, of Social Movements 2022. We've been preparing this for over a year now. Before we really get into this program, there are a, f there's a few housekeeping announcements from me. First of all, this is a participative event. So please do help out wherever help is needed. We've got a room here on the ground floor. Uh, room 8. So if you want to help out with the cafeteria or clearing up and so on, please go there. WE08. So you can get info there about where you can help. Some people are staying at the camping campsite. So please, no smoking there, no fires, no barbecues, no flames, noth nothing like that. That we've got a high risk of fires at the moment. Would you like to, if you'd like to lock away uh, valuables or get rid of uh, heavy luggage, you can go to the same room, WE08, on the ground floor. The technical uh, staff have been handing out interpreting equipment. After the event, please always hand that in. Don't hang on to it thinking, oh, I'll give it back on Sunday. Please always hand it back after every event and then get it back later. Our social media team has a request. If you want to Twitter to tweet about this or use Instagram, the hashtag is ESU2022 or ESU2022. If you have any questions, comments and so on, please speak to people with a blue name tag. They can at least point you in the right direction. So that's it from me. I hope everyone enjoys themselves and has a good experience. Ich stehe hier nur ganz kurz. So, just very briefly, I'll pass the floor right on to the professor. Hello everyone, good evening. Sorry, I'm going to read this out. I wouldn't normally... But I've passed this to the interpreters, so I think that should be easier for them. I was given the title or the subject. The world is changing, but wh where is it going? A bit nearer? Okay. You have to say this. So it's quite a profane title. Modern capitalist societies can't be thought of as the peak of development in many aspects um, progress can be made economically, technologically and so on. However, we progress in steps, step by step. Sometimes there are abrupt changes. Joseph Schumpeter talked about creative destruction and ecologically, this could be described as destructive creations. People talk about climate change. We think of a gradual warming of the world. However, we've known for a while now that there are certain tipping points in the biophysical systems of the world. Then things are not gradual. Things deteriorate for people, animals, and flora, there can be a cascade of a domino effect. This can lead to irreversible collapse of ecosystems. We can now see that the changes that are happening in models or in the model of the IPCC, and there have been great underestimates. Currently, 
we are on a path that by the end of this century in comparison to the pre-industrial level could lead to more than three degrees centigrade increase in temperatures so the uh, Paris climate negotiations in 2015 uh, pointed to an increase in the near future of around 1.5 degrees centigrade. Climate researchers didn't want to be uh, deemed to be crying wolf. They have been perhaps watering down warnings. Industrial capitalism focused on fossil fuel can, uh, cannot solve our problems. So, people are glossing over uh, calculations and whitewashing so NGOs and some civil society organizations have been involved in this dangerous game. This People are deceiving themselves. Mostly they've thought that political decisions must be made attractive or more palatable. About two weeks ago, at the start of this month, influential climate researchers came together with a publication. It was called Climate Endgames. They were looking at worst case scenarios that must be considered. Global heating of around 3 degrees centigrade or more by the end of this century would lead to these nightmare scenarios. So within a period of less than 100 years we would see these effects. We last saw these temperatures during the Eocene. That's 50 million years ago. This is long before uh, good conditions for humanity, the so-called Holocene period, started roughly 12,000 years ago. We can expect certain consequences. There would be abnormal growth patterns so modern industrial capitalism is now 250 years old, which was started on the basis of fossil fuels. Uh, vital ecosystems for life can collapse. I think you all know what they are. Often we, s we can see this in many places today. We can see global heating of uh, one degree C. So the link between water, energy, and food production uh, is affected. This is the basis for all uh, life on Earth. We've seen damage already. This means that food security for billions of people is no longer guaranteed in the long term. So smooth, controllable change referred to in the title can't be guaranteed. If we're looking at three degrees global heating, we really can't talk in those terms. There will be many diseases that will spread and zoonotic diseases like COVID-19. At the same time, there is existential need in many societies. There's been an increase in violent internal and interstate conflicts and this is what we must expect. I refer to a climate study. It warns of synchronic failures at the same time. This will affect countries and systems in economic and technical terms, all human systems. There can be a dam domino effect as we saw in the global financial crisis in 2007-2008 and that crisis of course could barely be stopped. So my main theory is as follows. We are looking at various developments today which all show that there are two pillars that are the basis for modern industrial capitalism and that must be called into question. Firstly, 
free markets, deregulation, freeing them from social control and responsibility. This is very inhumane. So supply and demand would then be the controlling forces and price uh, is the controlling factor in unregulated unreg markets. The key idea is this. Using fossil fuels means we want more, more energy production per hectare of land. We've known this for some time since Kant, that the earth is a globe. We can't increase the amount of land. Only if we manage to change the way we live and we run our society is that we stop our capitalization, capitalization way of accumulating and this accumulating mentality in the use of energy like we do in the global north only then can we see hope for the future on this planet i think it is important to mention one part as well that we should also look at the fact what didn't change and i know most of us have already tried working on it for the past 30 years. If we look back on the change that has not happened, of course, none of us will be excited. And we can see that globalization has not led to what we were hoping for. Many of the promises were broken, in fact. The opening of markets for capital goods and services and also to a certain extent for workforce also meant that decreasing the prices of goods did not mean that at the same time we would see an increase in democracy or an increase in human rights and peace. Secondly, liberalizing and deregulating capital markets also meant that we see an increase in speculation. So the focus of economic activity has not been on productive value creation to cover essential human needs, but rather to see a focus on interest rates and an increase in shareholder value. Therefore, we see an increase in monetary assets we see a trend towards looking for new investment opportunities. And we see an increase in private and sovereign debtors. These sovereign debtors, which are the states, often see a responsibility towards those asset owners. And they rarely ever feel accountable in any way. In many countries, we see an increase in authoritarian, xenophobic counter-revolutions. Fourthly, we see an implementation of a uniform global market which for goods and services, which helped establishing global standards, technical norms, prices, and standards. But at the same time, we do not see the spread of more human rights or labor rights. When Karl Marx pointed out a tendency in the beginning of the 21st century, which we now see as a completed tendency, which meant we see a production on a global scale. This means that market participants will be forced, no matter where they live and what they produce, that they would find themselves at the bottom of the supply chain and that they would end up as rate takers. Because if they do not start off as a standard setter, then you would always have to try to undercut prices, which is happening through low wages or in breach of labor regulations as well as breaches in basic human rights. At the top end of this value chain, we also see a concentration of capital. 
and this also enables a certain economic power that also will show itself in political influence. This trend has led to an increase in economical and social injustice in Europe as well as the countries of the global north. More so in countries, like Dieter Sänger said, of non-OECD countries where the majority of the world population lives. Although the German foreign minister still manages to talk about a rule and norm-based foreign policy, we see a contrast in reality. The vision of global governance seemed to be self-motivation, but by now we see that it has failed, in fact. The EU is no longer a role model. It is not a normative power that will stand up for human rights, for peace, democracy, or sustainability. It is not a role model for other countries, neither inside or in foreign policy as well. We see an outdated model like the American way of life. We need to, we see that we have a focus towards the inside without walls, we cannot actually uphold our standard of lives. We see lethal exclusion when we look at our outside borders. Luckily, this does not happen against refugees from Ukraine, at least not if they are white. At the same time, we see quite the opposite when it comes to different skin colors and people that look different to us. We see that this value-based European foreign policy is not applicable when it comes to people that come from the Zahel zone or the Middle East or the US. And we have refugees fleeing from different conflict zones. We see that this increase in inequality leads to flight in different levels, from rural areas to urban areas, from these urban areas for young people to also flee eventually to Europe as they hope for more opportunities. And we are aware of the reason why people are fleeing. We see a forced liberalization of the agricultural sector, which led to more problems in different countries. We see fragile states that have to pay certain sums of money, which only destabilizes them more. Moreover, we see that this new normal is changing the way we do things. We see an ecological catastrophe, and we see people fleeing to Europe. We also see changes in our climate, like droughts, floods, fires, and locusts, for example. Furthermore, we have internal as well as interstate conflicts, which only deteriorate because of the weapons made available easily. I hope that we agree here at this event that an adequate political response in this crazy times is necessary. And we need radical political consequences. And this would also mean that we speak about freedom and about liberties of certain people. And that is definitely necessary. For centuries, we're aware of the fact for that the ecological footprint of European citizens needs to decrease, especially for Germans. Because Germany has reached its overshoot date on May 4th, not like the rest of the world, which was July 28th, 2022. We have used more wood, more plants, and more food than we can regrow in one year. And we have also 
emitted more CO2 than oceans and forests could take up. We know that we have pillars of an ecological imperative where we should be aware of the fact that policy needs to focus on a European, national and regional level. These dimensions are important and can be seen as the German example. In Germany, it is important that we decrease the use of resources back to the 70s in the next step to the 60s and the following step of the 50s. The technological advances that we've made does not mean that we need to limit ourselves very much. This would also mean that we see rich people and middle class limit themselves and their lifestyle. But we need to be honest, we also have poor people and the poor parts of societies that need to decrease their use of non-luxury goods, of, of luxury goods, I'm sorry. And we might have to implement a managed austerity. We cannot achieve a social ecological transformation by simply electrifying our use of electricity instead of using fossil fuels. And we, need, we cannot trust in the fact that we will have electricity from renewable energy sources because that is simply impossible. We need a transformation. And this transformation from renewable to renewable energy does not keep all the promises. The growth dy dynamics that, that we have watched in the last 250 years cannot cannot continue because we base our growth on the use of fossil fuels. We have many hectares of land that we can use. But the biggest threat that we see, which is the destruction of biodiversity, in order to stop this process, we would have to use 50% of the land that we have available to go back to nature reserves. All the needs of every citizen in the world would only be possible if everyone would save the resources and if we would only cover our needs based on 50% of the land that we have available. And this is what we need to base this tendency on. And I think that many of us would probably be skeptical now because it seems difficult to achieve. I know this is not a very beautiful picture to paint, but we have a transformation here that is shocking. And we also need to focus on the fact that this transformation from a fossil capitalism is not part of the agenda anywhere. Let me just look at my notes again. I need to touch on another topic that we cannot avoid here. We have seen Russia's invasion in Ukraine and the geopolitical consequences that follow, which do not only go, which does not only have Russia to blame, but we see that we need to decrease our use of energy. When it comes to the European Green Deal, and the use of energy, we see that all these ideas were changed because of this invasion. We see an economic war happening and sanctions from NATO states that make the European Green Deal as a fake program. We have the Repower EU program from 2021, which is scandalous. The program was meant for five to 10 years which means that we have an increase of 5% in the use of coal in the European Union. This is the use of energy for all of Belgium 
as a reference point. The coal is not imported from Russia anymore, but rather imported from South Africa, Australia, or Colombia instead of Russia. The increase in the, of the use of atomic energy, as well as the recommendation of the European Union, is happening in Hungary, in Belgium, and in France, to mention just a few. This will lead to 20 to a situation where millions of megawatt in renewable energy sources in 2030, which will be lost because we might have a bigger supply of energy because we just cannot turn off atomic energy plants. Before the start of the conflict in Ukraine, also because of our demand in Russia and Ukraine, we saw infrastructural lock-ins, which meant that we were buying into fossil fuels in other countries. Several months ago, we have experienced a weird sanction pact that European states have agreed on, which has the potential to break everyone's neck. We had an oil embargo on Russian oil, which meant that we also started to rely on a different country, the country of Saudi Arabia, which also is in no way better. We have started to focus our needs We see a third of the gas imported from Russia than before. Gazprom has reacted to the sanctions that we have made as European states, has actually asked for a payment in ruble instead of euros. We have said that Russia is breaking the gas treaties that we have made, although we have not proper contracts based on the on the supply of Russian gas. Because these contracts are secret and no one will get to read them. We have this energy war happening, starting with the US when they tried to end North Stream 2. And we see an increase in fossil fuel prices. Many industrial goods depend on that for their price. So the net income of energy companies has doubled. Windfall profits have been made. Shell BP and other companies have paid out massive dividends to their shareholders and they have done share buybacks as well. So gas from the Russian pipeline can't be moved so easily. So what we're seeing is a lot more extra emissions in addition to what we're doing in terms of consumption of gas from elsewhere. Um, Europeans, especially Germany, has been turning to fracking gas, which is even more damaging to the environment. And they don't care too much about the price either. So in the Gulf of Mexico and on at European coasts, massive investments are being made in new infrastructure for li liquefaction, transportation, and uh, regasifying of fracking gas. This investment only pays off later. It doesn't have to be written off as stranded assets if this infrastructure is operated for at least 30 years. Now, in 30 years' time, 
the EU is supposed to be climate neutral. So the politicians and the uh, business bosses in the EU have not really done anything to push for peace negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. Quite the opposite. They have been drumming up support for militarization of the EU. In Germany alone, an extra 100 billion has been put into defense spending. But what's not clear is this. That we're looking at estimates of 600 billion investment costs for expansion of wind and solar energy. Now, how's that going to be financed? At the same time, so explosive bombs literally are being dropped. There are also carbon bombs. The Guardian coined the term to refer to 200 new oil and gas projects that are being pushed this year. Their calculations show that 36.5 billion tons of CO2 are already pumped out. This expansion, these carbon bombs, will be causing an extra billion tons of CO2 emissions. So, to put it briefly, the war in Ukraine is leading to an escalation in the war against the planet. This war against the planet c can have no winner. The losers are billions of people in the global south and the young people among us. It's not long now till 2030. We've got eight years left. If we go in the wrong direction, then we will be setting the points to put our train on a very negative track, leading to the abyss. There's a big message to come out of this ESU. Europe needs peace more than anything. If Europe If Europe can't be a power for peace, then the change we're looking at will just lead to chaos and destruction and violence. We need a big peace movement in Europe. And if we can't do that, then why do we have social movements in Europe? We're looking at a crisis of civility within and among European peoples. How can we stop this? European social movements need to be a continental peace movement. Otherwise, um, they won't be helping with the tough conflicts ahead. We need this perspective and we need to see that fossil-powered capitalism must have the rug pulled out from under it. Activists have come uh, together under the slogan, End Fossil Occupy. They plan to occupy schools and universities this autumn. I share their perspective. We need to be more disruptive than ever. As that's our only chance for survival, we need to disrupt business as usual and start with a space where we have the power to mobilize and organize our schools and universities. Es kommt noch ein Satz danach, und der heißt: Schools, they train us for a world that has no future, a world of fossil capitalism. Andere Ziele für die there are other aims of European social movements over coming days. In many workshops and forums, I believe end fossil capitalism is the real headline, and that's the most important of all the goals. Thank you. So, 
So, I'm here once more. I'm here to p hand over to Attack France. But let's just look at this banner and pass the floor to Stefan. Hello, everyone. We'd like to make an announcement. In this summer university, on Saturday, we are going to have a big action. We are near one of the biggest uh, lignite mining areas in the world. In Katzweiler, damaging fo fossil fuels are mined. It's uh, surface mining. And Lutzarat is a village that's threatened by this. Let's lift this up a bit. On Saturday at 4 p.m., we are setting off. We have enough buses for all of you to take part. That's happening in Lutzerat. Please, everybody, do come a bit before 4 p.m. Come to the tent out there where they're serving coffee. Coffee tent. That's where we're setting off. We will be doing a march. It's a red line action. We want to draw a big red line. Let's make it clear. This is the end of fossil mining. This far and no further. This is the, where we're talking about the 1.5 degree goal. We'll also be having a big action with an X. We want to make a big image there. There are other uh, small actions. Please talk to me or Emilio here if you'd like to take part in the smaller actions. We need a few volunteers and we'll uh, instruct them. So we'll be back here at 8 p.m. There's space for everyone. It's all organized. You are very welcome to take part. So Saturday at quarter to four in the afternoon, out there at the tent where they serve coffee. So you are very welcome. Come along. Stop the climate killer. Thank you very much. Great that you're all here. Uh, hi, can everyone hear me? Okay. Uh, so I'm Alice from Attack France, and this is. I'm uh, Annick from Attack France. Okay. I'm going to speak in English because I believe this is the language most most of you can understand. Annick is going to speak in French. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't have time to print uh, my notes. And as the previous speaker. Um, I need to follow what I've written uh, for some parts uh, for the interpreters. Uh, also, I'm going to explain about the orange vest uh, very soon. Uh, but first, um, so in the second part of this opening session, and please bear with us until the end, is going to be a mix of uh, music and speakers who are going to be to uh, testify to the diversity of all the movements uh, represented in this summer university. And first, we are going to start with a song. Uh, yes. Um, so Gert uh, Schinkel uh, is a songwriter and a singer and is going to share with us a few traditional protest songs. Oh, yes. Thanks. Um, and we're going to circulate uh, the lyrics of the songs. Uh, they are in German and English.
Schönen guten Abend. Da muss noch mehr Saft. Good evening. Zwei, drei. One, two, three, four. Ein, zwei, da ist. Ist jetzt äh, ein gewisser Pegel erreicht. Have we got the right levels? I hope so. Can you hear me okay? People were looking for a singer, someone to sing a few songs from the social movements. For, for decades I've been writing songs for social movements. People wanted to hear the anthems of the movements in a couple of languages. So I made a suggestion. I said four songs overall throughout the evening and I've I've put them into German you can't quite say translation you have to make them singable I'll just get started with a song by Anne Finney an American uh, singer-songwriter it deals with an issue that we've always been thinking about social movements. It's this. Ich werde es zweisprachig singen. In two, in two languages. Was it Caesar Chavez or Rosa Parks the day? Some say Dr. King or Gandhi set them on their way. No matter who your mentors are, it's pretty plain to see. If you've been to jail for justice, you're in good company. Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake your hand. Cause sitting in and lying down are ways to take a stand. Have you sung a song for freedom or marched the picket line? Have you been to jail for justice? Then you're a friend of mine. Wer war es gewesen, der den Weg als erster ging? War es Mahatma Gandhi oder Martin Luther King? Egal, wenn man vorausging, man erkennt es gut. Wer wie sie in Knast geht für Gerechtigkeit ist. Wer in Knast geht für Gerechtigkeit, dem reich ich die Hand. Mit Sitzblockaden, Todstellen zeigst du Gewissen und Verstand. Und singst du laut für Freiheit, hakst im Protest dich ein. In Knast gehst für Gerechtigkeit, will ich dir zur Seite sein. You law-abiding citizens, come listen to this song. Laws are made by people and people can be wrong. Once unions were against the law, but slavery was fine. Women were denied the vote while children worked the mine. Gesetzes treue Bürger, dies für euch gesungen wird. Gesetze sind von Menschen, viele haben sich geirrt. Viel war früher verboten, doch Sklaverei erlaubt. Frauen ohne Wahlrecht, der Mann hat sich im Recht geglaubt. The more you study history, the less you can deny it. A rotten law stays on the books till folks with guts defy it. Blick in die Geschichte und dann geht es auch zu. Falsches Recht bleibt falsches Recht, ich wehren sollte es auch du. Und zeigt zivilen Widerstand, gewaltfrei im Tod ist. Und lern aus der Geschichte, dass sich Unrecht ändern lässt. The law's supposed to serve us, and so are the police. But when the system fails, it's up to us to speak our peace. We must be ever vigilant for justice to prevail. Get courage from your convictions, let them haul you off to jail. Das Recht soll Menschen schützen, das soll auch die Polizei. Wenn dies System versagt, dann machen wir uns davon frei. Lasst uns tapfer streiten für Gerechtigkeit. Mut wächst aus Überzeugung, seid zum Widerstand bereit. Have you been to 
jail for justice I want to shake your hand Cause sitting in and lying down Are ways to take a stand Have you sung a song for freedom Or marched that picket line Have you been to jail for justice Then you're a friend of mine The Knast geht für Gerechtigkeit Den reich ich die Hand Mit Sitzblockaden, Todstellen Zeigst du Gewissen und Verstand Und singst du laut für Freiheit Hagst im Protest dich ein In Knast geht's für Gerechtigkeit Will ich dir zur Seite sein In Knast geht's für Gerechtigkeit Will ich dir zur Seite sein Dankeschön. Mein Name steht übrigens nicht in diesem Heft drin. Ich bin aber nicht einer von denjenigen, die bewusst darauf verzichten zu sein. You cannot find me in one of the pamphlets, but my name is Gerd Schinkel and I like to sing on stages where people appreciate my music. Um, now we're going to have a five-minute break that was not that most of the German participants don't have this very important tool that they need in order to uh, in order to understand me uh, because I am also I've been asked to speak in French actually because uh, the interpreters need to rest and it would be easier for them if I spoke in French so you're going to need this if you want to understand. So a five minute break so that everyone can be equipped. Thanks.
Oui, ça marche, oui. Euh, on va reprendre pour ne pas perdre trop de temps et ne pas finir ensemble trop tard. Donc, merci à tous ceux et celles qui sont dans la salle de vous asseoir et de faire si. I would like to ask everyone to sit down so we can continue. I would like to pass the floor to Alice, who will start presenting. Alice will present the program. And she will talk about what will happen during this university. And she will also talk about the awareness team. This is something that we've implemented during a European summer school. Thank you. I was asked to speak in French. And I guess this is easier for the interpreters. So I will translate my speech from English into French and I will speak slower. I guess that's going to be easier. The awareness team is based on the fact that we have power situations in societies and these structures are replicated within social movements. This happens consciously as well as unconsciously. We've grown up in a world that also has sexism, racism, classism, and other systems of oppression in place, which also magnifies it. And oftentimes we reflect these without being aware of it. So we may not necessarily be responsible for it, but we are responsible to identify these types of oppressions. May it be words or deeds or actions. And we have systemic differences that are reflected in our activist circles as well. So we are fighting for social justice in the end. We need to acknowledge this type of oppression and be aware of it. So this oppression will often be against other people that have been oppressed before in the past, and this happens on a daily basis. We want everyone to feel comfortable here. We want everyone to be integrated in our social movements. This, of course, from the moment that you also share our goals. And this is why we also need to implement measures to limit the oppression. You probably saw it in the program as well. We have a safe space, which will of course not be 100% safe. We need to admit that we also face oppressions that all of us face and we have grown up in it in our daily lives in this systemic oppression. But we want to try to break through these mechanisms and we don't want these mechanisms to take too much space. So we want to create a special space and a safe space. So we have created this awareness team that will support people who might feel this type of oppression. And we want people to be able to tackle these difficult emotional moments as well. People can approach the awareness team if they feel a need to. You can also call the awareness team that you can see on the board behind me. It's a mobile phone number. So you can call this number 
or you can find the team in room Z 134A at the end of a hallway. The awareness team will listen to you, support you if you need that. And we listen and to find out what to identify what you need so that you feel better and that you can feel safe here once more during our European Summer University. We will not doubt your expressions of what you've felt and what you've experienced. <coughs> and we also want to acknowledge that your unique experience and perspective is important. I wanted to point out that this room is available and the mobile phone number. Then we also have these workers that wear the orange vests. Please approach us. So just feel free to talk to us and reach out to us if you have become a victim of some sort of oppression and where you felt your borders being violated. If you've seen any of these behaviors, then feel free to approach us. Of course, you can act immediately if you're there. There are some principles that you need to respect. Don't ever do it instead of that person that became victim of the action. Make sure that the person at hand also reacts and focus on what that person needs. If that person needs help, feel free to do so, but also enter into discussion. You can also walk that person to the room Z134A when necessary. Also, if you would experience something like this in a workshop, if you s hear statements or if you see behavior patterns that you feel hurt by, then feel free to also approach us. There's another principle that I'd like to talk about. There are so many different types of oppressions and so many different ways. And we know that all of us make mistakes. But it's important to also admit that these mistakes are being made. It's important to apologize. It's important to be informed and to change your behavior. And it's important that we do not repeat these mechanisms. Therefore, we would also like to support the people that are discriminated against or oppressed. If you would like to discuss about this topic further, then you can also talk to the awareness team still in the room Z134A. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alice. I think it's important that we have this awareness team and that we share the same approach. This summer university of social movements is a European summer university. We have different people from different countries, different backgrounds. If we call out countries, then please raise your hand if you come from a country. Spain, raise your hand, please. Thank you very much. Outside, there are apparently more Spanish people. Italy, raise your hand, please. One person. Do we have people from Ukraine present? Ukraine, please raise your hand. 
I know that we have participants from Ukraine, but um, they might join us later this week. Do we have people from Belgium? Great. Do we have people from the Netherlands? Raise your hand, please. Netherlands. Great Britain, raise your hands, please. We do. Sweden, please raise your hand. Norway, raise your hands, please. People from France, raise your hands. Do we have people from countries outside of Europe? I think so. Amazing. Do we have people from Germany present? Raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. I think I also forgot about some countries. Portugal, if you're from Portugal, raise your hand, please. Are there, there are probably other countries that I forgot. Austria? Is Austria here? Is that it? Poland, raise your hand. Switzerland, we have a lady from Switzerland. Feel free to add if I forgot your country. We are a European Summer University of Social Movements and that is amazing. Thank you very much. We will pass the floor to our musicians. Thank you. Ja, ich jetzt ist wieder was drauf, ja. Also ich versuche so ein bisschen den Internationalismus auch über den Atlantik zu tragen und singe jetzt. I will sing a song that is originally from Pete Seegers. He is somebody that used to sing for social movements. He took a topic He focused on discussions and interactions among social movements as well as with the state. And people can feel a certain way, and this is what this song is about. Devil time I'm gonna fool you now Old devil time You'd like to bring me down When I feel low My lovers gather round And help me rise Fight you one more time Plagst du mich Zeit Teufel, du schreckst mich nicht Glaub nicht mit Druck Kriegst du mich jemals klein Fühl ich mich gehetzt 
dann sind meine Liebsten da. Geben mir Kraft, dass ich dir widerstehe. Oh, Devil Pay, you've often been me down. You thought I'd cry and beg you for the end. At that very time, my lovers gathered round and helped me rise to fight you one more time. Plagst du mich Schmerz? Du Teufel krümmst mich nicht. Denkt nicht, ich weine. Heul euch etwas vor. Ich bleib nicht allein. Dann sind meine Liebsten da. Geben mir Kraft, dass ich dir widerstehe. Old Devil Fear. You with your icy hands, old devil fear. You'd like to freeze me cold when I'm afraid. My lovers gather round and help me rise to fight you one more time. Angst, du Teufel mit kalter Hand, macht es dir Spaß? Gefrierst du mich zu Eis? Zitter ich mal vor Angst? Dann sind meine Liebsten da. Dass ich dir widerstehe. Old Devil Hate, I know you long ago. Before I learned poison in your breath. When I hear your lies, my lovers gather round and help me rise to fight you one more time. Plagst du mich Hass? Teufel, ich kenn dich gut. Weiß wie. Kenn dich am Gestank, versprühst du dein Gift, dann sind meine Liebsten da, geben mir Kraft, dass ich dir widerstehe. No storm or fire can never be. Us down. No wind that blows carries us further on, and you feel, oh, lovers gather round, and we will rise to sing it one more time. Feuer, kein Sturm, uns je zu Boden zwingt, packt uns ein Wind, schiebt er uns nur voran. Wenn ihr eng 
ängstlich seid, ihr Lieben, dann kommt zu mir. Fehlt es euch an Mut, stärkt euch dieser Gesang. Kein Feuer, kein Sturm, uns je zu Boden zwingt, packt uns ein Wind. Der uns nur voran, wenn wir ängstlich sind, dann sind unsere Lieder da. Fehlt es uns an Mut, stärkt uns unser Gesang. Fehlt es uns an Mut, stärkt uns unser Gesang. Eh bien, merci beaucoup. Alors là, on va passer à une partie où on va passer la parole à... Thank you very much. We're going to pass the floor now. So now we're looking, moving on in terms of theme. I've got three interventions. Another song. Four uh, speeches, then we'll have some music. First of all, let's just get a feel for the room. And you can lift your hand, put, lift up your hands more than once. So, people can raise their hands for everything. So, to prioritize the ecological uh, climate movement, is that close to your heart, especially? So, you can give yourself a round of applause, of course. Social justice. Yeah. Um, finance, financial justice. People fighting free trade and multinationals. Yeah. In the anti racist movements. Yeah. Feminists. And people who are there for peace and international solidarity. Everybody. People fighting for fundamental rights. You can give yourself a round of applause as well. So for each speaker, we've asked them to talk about big issues for their movements currently and to say what they want to construct here at the ECU. So Annie, could you introduce the first speaker, please? Firstly, Muriel Guibert. Muriel is a finance inspector in France, a feminist, joint spokesman of a French trade union. She's going to talk about labor issues at the moment. I think I'll pass the floor to you. There you go.
Good evening. Good evening, everybody. So this made quite an impression on me. Like this, yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Mobilizations in the labor movement. This autumn, we'll be focusing on uh, revaluing salaries. In the UK, we've had strikes that have spread on this issue of wages. In France, there's already a mobilization for the 29th of September re uh, regarding this issue. So pre precarious people, students, unemployed people have been complaining increasingly after the pandemic has been poorly managed. So, um, physically and in terms of jobs and economically. It's an economic crisis. Also, there are consequences of the war in Ukraine and uh, energy dependency. That's not all. There's an increasing appetite amongst the richest. They are defending the capitalist system with the distribution of dividends. It seems to be unlimited, whatever the international circumstances. Our capitalist system is rooted in oppression of women, minorities, and people who are pushed into constant competition. We need decent salaries, social protection, health, public services, decent work conditions, fewer working hours, re gearing work towards wealth that works for the planet. These issues are underlying They're what we're fighting for. And so in trade unions, we will be discussing this in the different workshops and forums during this university. People have been asking me about the place of work, of labor. It's vital for a majority of the population. It's a key lever to debate and convince people and can, to build up alternatives. These are increasingly seen as urgent for most people. We need to also fight the far right. That is feeding off hatred and fear. We know that it's a key issue in our struggle. For me and for you, I, I believe, I hope. In this university, we want to consolidate, expand our demands for social transformation. Let me give you some examples. We can't have an ecological transition without workers, especially people in polluting industries. For example, uh, through a collective started in France, bringing together trade union organizations and environmental groups and social justice groups. We have started to highlight key fights in social and environmental issues. We will have some workshops on this. We need to get out of capitalism. We need to fight the precarious situation of workers and exploitation. This hits uh, women, migrants, uh, disabled people, and other minority groups. We can't succeed without them. We need to expand, build up an anti-racist movement and a feminist strike. We're all working in the same direction there. This, the issue, will let European groups come together, feminists, trade unionists, and people from other areas. We all have a contribution to make. We are, we are providing our experience, our experience of struggle, our skills. We need to come together and fight our shared battle. It's increasingly clear that we are working together. I I want to construct with you. We need joint mobilizations across borders, across, across our fields of struggle. It's not just uh, an empty call. We need to work on each individual struggle 
and it is inevitable that we work for this change in the world. Thank you. Je vais passer la parole à Alberto Sanchez, an economist, a member of TAC Spain. He's involved in international questions, uh, transaction tax, fighting free trade agreements, and recently, recent fight for ending patents on vaccines. He's also a member of the Alto Summit Network. He'll talk about uh, fiscal and f justice and finance. Good evening, everybody. Two months ago, a violin called Da Vinci, made in 1714 by Antonio Stradivari, was sold at auction for 14.5 million euros. Previously, the same house, Tarisio, had auctioned another Stradivarius violin, this time the Lady Blunt, for just over 15 million euros. Do you think these purchases were made in order that renowned, famous violinists could play them at concerts and uh, in, the, in, 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 in order that uh, thousands of people can enjoy this extraordinary sound, it is not likely. These instruments have become pieces of speculation bought by banks or investment funds and stored in safes in the hope of reselling them at a much higher price than they paid for them. Just like gold bars or diamonds, they are considered mere financial assets to do business with. Nothing else. Well, at this point, you may be wondering whether this has anything to do with the theme of my speech, which is uh, tax uh, justice. Well, it, it has. We'll just go into it. Two of the major changes in the international economy in recent decades have been, on the one hand, the process of financialization, whereby companies seek profits through financial channels rather than through production and distribution. And on the other hand, the fiscal counter reforms aimed to ensure that those who have the most and earn the most pay less and less taxes. The first change has been, among other things, converting all goods and services in common stuff. That's called commodita commoditization, commoditization, this is a, diff a very difficult uh, uh, word to, to speak. And that financial activities have been extended to new economic area of everyday, everyday life through priva privatizations, housing, pensions, scholarships, water, and so on, even nature. This has led to a pandemic of inequality that is advancing at an ever increasing rate. According to the World Inequality Report from this year, coordinated by Thomas Piketty, among others, the richest 10% of the world's population currently receives 52% of world's income, while the poorest half of the population earns 8.5%. And at the local level, we also see how the richest 10% increasingly accumulate more and more wealth within each country. The second change has its roots in the famous trickle-down theory, which promised that if you cut taxes to the rich, you would end up benefiting everyone else because that money would be invested and boost the economy. What a bloody lie, and what a huge fraud to the ordinary people. Uh, um, uh, um, what, yeah, a recent study by two British economists, David Hope and Julian Lindbergh, from the London School of Economics, has shown that the tax reforms undertaken by almost two dozen countries over the past 50 years have not led to higher economic growth 
or employment creation, but rather to a stagnation of productive investments. Well, this is unfortunately the current state of affairs. And the question now is, how do we cope with it? How do we confront this awful situation of injustice? Well, for us it's very simple. It is about creating a balanced system of rights and obligations where finances are strongly regulated and at the service of the productive economy and not speculative, where collection of monetary resources is progressive, equitable and transparent, and where it ensures that financing of public policies aimed at improving the quality of life of people achieving high levels of socioeconomic equity in harmony with the planet we inhabit. We call this fiscal and financial justice, which is equivalent to social justice. In order to achieve this goal, there are numerous proposals from both ATTAC and other uh, CSOs, um, which you will be able to learn about by attending any of the workshops scheduled on this topic during the four days of the university. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci, uh, Alberto. Thank you, Alberto. I'll give the floor to Nick Derdon of the movement from Great Britain. This movement is part of the attack network worldwide. Nick is currently writing a book about pharmaceutical companies. I think that's very interesting. He will speak about multinational companies and their role in the world. Nick, you have the floor. Well, first of all, it's very, very nice to be back here with all of our allies for the first time in so many years. That feels very nice. And we're going to need, we need to come together if we're to fight and confront global corporations, multinational corporations, which I believe are at the heart of so many of our problems. These corporations today have become the primary vehicles for extraction, and economic exploitation in the world. They're at the heart of driving forward inequality and environmental destruction. And so they have to be dismantled. They have to be, their power has to be overthrown. And that's a massive task. <laughs> and what I found in researching the, the book that was just talked about there is the problem may be even worse than we think because over the last three years, I've been working on this issue of vaccine inequality, where in one part of the world, enormous pharmaceutical corporations have made obscene profits from the pandemic, from COVID-19. But they've made these profits without actually creating the vaccines in the first place. The vaccines were created with public sector money and then privatized, handed over to these corporations. And in fact, you find across the pharmaceutical sector, they don't research the drugs that we need to create a healthy planet. What they do, their business model, is to buy up the intellectual property to these medicines and squeeze every last drop of profit out of it, even if the cost of that profit is artificially restricting the supply of vaccines in the middle of a pandemic to vast swathes of the world's population. You, you can't imagine anything more obscene than putting profits ahead of the lives of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people. But unfortunately, this isn't unusual in our system of monopoly capitalism. We see it now, as has already been said, in the cost of living crisis, 
where corporate concentration is increasing the price of basic goods that we all need in order to return vast sums of money to the executives and shareholders of these corporations. The price is ordinary people going without meals and being unable to heat their own homes. It's obscene. But what I want to say is, across the world, you know this, so many people are fighting back. And I think there is more hope today of challenging this corporate rule than there was when our organizations first came together in the 1990s in the anti-globalization movement. When I look around the world and see, you know, even in the United States where corporations have such a stranglehold on the political system, there, there are anti-monopoly movements that are challenging the power of big tech and big pharma and securing important victories. Here in Europe, I mean, we were all part of defeating the awful corporate charter that was TTIP. That was an incredible victory. Today, in the cost of living crisis, um, there are growing calls for price controls, there are growing calls for the nationalization and renationalization of the energy industry. That's a huge change um, from 20 years ago. And look further, in El Salvador, they banned metal mining. Uh, just this year in Pakistan, they started ripping up investment deals that contained investment clauses that allowed big corporations to sue them. In South Africa, which I'm most excited about, they've built a medical research hub and they, are, they have reverse engineered Moderna's vaccine and they are sharing that knowledge without patents to governments around the world. They are challenging the big pharmaceutical corporations directly and immediately. And that's really exciting. But, but of course, it's not just challenging individual corporations. It's challenging the rules that allow these corporations to operate in this way. And there again, I think the challenge to neoliberal governments around the world is incredibly exciting and gives me enormous hope. The indigenous people's movement in Ecuador, which scored a huge victory against their right-wing government um, uh, uh, only a few months ago. The overthrow of the corrupt and authoritarian government in Sri Lanka, in that, pe in that peaceful people's movement. The election of the first left-wing government in Colombia's history. And, <laughs> and the incredible work of our comrades in Chile and their new anti-corporate constitution, which is placing rights um, before corporate power, there in the birthplace of neoliberalism, which they are now declaring the graveyard of neoliberalism. I think here at, at the ESU, we should send solidarity um, and all of our strength to all of those amazing movements around the world. They are where our hope is. So I'll just end by saying, I think this week, the task before us is to sew these different threads together. Um, to talk about how we can better frame, explain, challenge, and overthrow this model of monopoly capitalism. Because at root, big business has become completely incompatible with the kind of society that all of us want to uh, live in um, and need to live in. In fact, they've become completely incompatible with democracy itself. These corporations have become a vehicle for waging a brutal class war on the majority of people in our societies. And replacing this model is the only way for us to live. Thank you. Master uh, Thank you very much, Nick. We will pass the floor to Geat, who will sing another song. And after that, we have four more speakers. And then hopefully we'll be done before 10 o'clock. Just to remind you, you won't find my name anywhere on a paper here. My name is Gerd Schinkel. And this song I heard the first time 52 years ago. 
written by an American singer-songwriter. His name was Phil Oakes. He started in the 60s and sang political songs. And this is one of his important, most important songs. And it's hard to imagine that a guy that writes such a song commits suicide at the age of 36 in 76. But this is the song, Why I Still Sing. There's no place in this world where I belong when I'm gone And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone And you won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone So I guess I have to do it while I'm here Kein Platz auf dieser Welt ist mein Zuhause nach dem Tod. Niemals atme ich mehr ein und aus nach dem Tod. Bringe niemals mehr ein Wort heraus nach dem Tod. Drum glaub ich, tu ich's besser noch mal hier. Flowing of the time when I'm gone All the pleasures of love will not be mine when I'm gone My pen won't pour a lyric line when I'm gone So I guess I have to do it while I'm here Ich spüre niemals mehr den Lauf der Zeit nach dem Tod. Ich merke weder Schmerz noch Einsamkeit nach dem Tod. Mein Stift ist zum Schreiben nie mehr bereit nach dem Tod. Drum glaub ich, tu ich's besser noch mal hier. And I won't breathe the bracing air when I'm gone. And I can't even worry about my cares when I'm gone Won't be asked to do my share when I'm gone So I guess I have to do it while I'm here Lust und Freude mir wohl kaum noch bleibt nach dem Tod Nutzlos man sich die Zeit vertreibt nach dem Tod. Keiner fragt, ob man was unterschreibt nach dem Tod. Und glaub ich, tu ich's besser noch mal hier. Denn I won't be running from the rain when I'm gone. And I can't even suffer from the pain. When I'm gone Can't say who's to praise And who's to blame When I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it While I'm here Von jedem Zwang Bin ich dann frei nach dem Tod Alles ist für mich Allein nach dem Tod Und niemals trag ich meinen Teil mehr bei nach dem Tod Drum glaub ich, tu ich's besser noch mal hier And I won't see the golden of the sun when I'm gone And the evenings and the mornings 
things will be one when I'm gone Can't be singing louder than the guns when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Ich seh nie mehr der Sonne helles Licht nach dem Mord hat mein Schrei kein Gewicht nach dem Tod. Drum glaub ich, schrei ich besser noch mal hier. All my days won't be dances of delight when I'm gone. And the sands will be shifting from my side when I'm gone. Can't add my name into the fight when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Hab kein Trotz mehr, wenn ich mich erschreck nach dem Tod Mut hilft mir nicht mehr aus dem Versteck nach dem Tod und Widerstand zu leisten hat kein Zweck nach dem Tod. Drum glaub ich, tu ich's besser noch mal hier. And I won't be laughing at the lies when I'm gone. And I can't question how or when or why when I'm gone. Can't live proud enough to die when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Dreiste Lügen stören mich nicht mehr nach dem Tod Ich frag auch nicht mehr wie und wann und wer nach dem Tod und stolz bereit zum Tod lebe ich nicht mehr nach dem Tod. Drum glaub ich, tu ich's noch, solange ich hier. There's no place in this world where I belong when I'm gone. And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone. Won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Kein Platz auf dieser Welt ist mein Zuhause nach dem Tod Niemals atme ich mehr ein und aus Bringe niemals mehr ein Lied heraus nach dem Tod. Drum tu ich's besser noch. Drum tu ich's besser noch. Drum tu ich's besser noch, solange ich hier. Alors, en fait, je me suis trompé, il n'y a pas quatre intervenants, intervenantes, il y en a trois. So, we've got three speakers. The first one is talking about anti-racism. Sima Saida, a, a, a cross-border militant based in London. Part of the Another Europe is Possible campaign. Uh, contributed to the Creeping Fascism book. Over to you. Thank you, Alice. So I'm here representing the organization Another Europe is Possible, and this organization fought uh, the Brexit campaign because we believed that it was a far-right reactionary project 
driven by racism and anti-migration sentiment. And now it's a horrible task and a thankless task, but we continue to fight the terrible consequences of Brexit. As you might have noticed, uh, the UK has one of the highest inflation rates in Europe at the moment. And this is relevant to race because it is impacting some of the poorest migrant communities in the country, which you'll hear about soon. So in the last four or five years that I've been active on the left, I found myself making a fair few speeches on race and racism. Some of them I've been asked to give. Can you hear me okay? And some of them I've launched into myself without people asking. And what I found is that the topic of race often makes people feel uncomfortable. And in the end, in most left spaces, it's good that it makes people feel uncomfortable. Because the truth is that when I and many other activists of color enter spaces that are predominantly white, we feel uncomfortable because we are minoritized in these spaces. Another reason that I feel uncomfortable is because the left and progressives purport to represent the working class. But in so many traditional left spaces, a huge element of the working class isn't present. When we think of the working class, we should think of the class globally, not just in Europe, not just in our nation states, but around the world. The fact is that a huge majority of the working class comes from racialized communities. People of color from former colonized regions, regions which continue to be exploited under neo-colonialism, as we heard from Nick Dearden with one small example of the vaccine. These people form the bulk of the working class. In the capital cities across much of Europe, racialized and migrant communities form a huge element of the proletariat. We are the working class, the cleaners, the shop assistants, the bus drivers, the healthcare workers, the Uber drivers. I live in East London, Forest Gate, a part of London where lots of workers come from racialized and minoritized communities. Last night, my next door neighbor knocked on the door asking for eight pounds to help pay for dinner for his family. He's a cleaner in the NHS and since the cost of living crisis, he's finding it difficult to pay his bills. His family is an immigrant family and these are some of the groups that will feel this cost of living crisis hardest. Yet, one of the biggest problems that I've seen in my time acting on the left is the absence of this hugely important and crucial group in many of the traditional forums where the political and internationalist left come together. That doesn't mean that racialized communities don't organize themselves, because they do. They do organize themselves and they are organizing themselves in cities in Europe, but also all across the world. There are many examples in history. What it means is that the traditional left and progressive movements are disconnected from the community structures of racialized groups. Now things are improving, it's not all doom and gloom. And I don't think we should feel hopeless or deflated about this issue. But we do need to put all our efforts into building connections with racialized groups, platforming them and centering the people most affected by racism in our fight against racism. Thank you. That's why Another Europe is Possible, the organization I'm representing, is so, so excited to be running a workshop on confronting Islamophobia across Europe at the ISU this week. It's happening this Friday, Note it down at 10 a.m. in room W223. 
and we will have a panel of brilliant activists from across Europe, from racialized communities with lived experience of Islamophobia. And all of these women are part of organized movements and campaigns fighting back against racism, against misogyny, against neoliberalism. And this includes from the UK, the fierce, unrelenting campaigner Shaista Aziz, who launched a viral campaign called The Three Hijabis, you should look it up on Google, which was to end racism in football, and who is also an elected councillor for the Labour Party in the city of Oxford. It also includes Sohini Ghosh from the Front Uni des Immigrants et Quartier Populaire, a self-organized migrant group operating in France to challenge the rise of the far right and racialized oppression. And we also have from nearby Selingen, down the road, Merve Sahin, a Delinka representative, elected to the Immigrants and Integration Council of the city of Selingen. So please come and join us at this workshop to ally with the Muslim community across Europe and learn how to tackle an issue that as we have seen is on the rise in France and elsewhere. That workshop is D050, Fighting Islamophobia Across Europe. It's on Friday at 10 a.m. in room W223. I could have talked about all of the different examples of racism everywhere across Europe, but I know you know all about it. So please come to the workshop and let's organize and do things together and fight. Okay, so there's also another really important workshop, um, which I also want to thank Bernard Drino from Sedetim, and shout out to European Alternatives as well as Global Justice Now for helping us organize. And that is E049, there's no safe Europe without a safe world. And that's tomorrow at 4 p.m. in room S103. Um, now this workshop is about building an international peace movement and is relevant to the issue of race as well. So our organization, we stand in solidarity with our comrades in Ukraine fighting a brutal imperialist invasion. And we stand in solidarity with our comrades in Russia struggling for peace and democracy against Putin's authoritarian regime. <laughs> in the UK especially, Russia's war on Ukraine has unleashed some very interesting and at times quite sad discourse on race. For instance, the European Union rightly is welcoming Ukrainian refugees fleeing the horrors of war. And I'm sure there's much more that can be done as the, and there is more that can be done. The UK has a terrible racist border regime and it needs to be, do more to welcome Ukrainian refugees. But at least when you enter UK border control, you will see signs that say Ukrainian refugees Welcome. But you don't see the same for Afghan refugees fleeing the Taliban. You don't see the same for Syrian refugees fleeing civil war. You don't see the same for asylum seekers from war-torn regions all across the global south. And of course, the reason is clear. The reason is racism. For many, white Europeans facing war are humanized, whereas for people of color in the global south, war is seen as a natural context, a natural habitat. So in our forum tomorrow, we're bringing together peace campaigners from Syria, from Afghanistan, as well as activists from Ukraine, Poland, Russia, France, and elsewhere to build the work of building an internationalist, anti-racist peace movement. And that workshop is tomorrow f at 4 p.m. Uh, in S103, sorry. Uh, uh, I ended my flow. But yeah, please let me see you again there at that workshop. The ISU as a whole is also dedicating an entire forum to intersectionality, and I hope that I'll see you there as well. And I hope you'll join us in these small efforts 
and small beginnings to fight racism and build a truly representative internationalist movement. I'd just like to end by saying it's so great to see all of you in person, to hear your voices after years of lockdown and pandemic. It's really a joyous moment to be here today. And I want to send out a huge thank you to all the ISU organizers and the staff, Marcus, Christiane, Dirk, and many others who've been working so hard behind the scenes to put this all together. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup, Sima. Thank you very much. I pass the floor to Judith Tamler from Attack Deutsch, from Attack Germany. She has organized the first plenary today, the Flinta. We were talking about feminism and rights for people with an LGBTQ community. I pass over to Judith. I think it's going to be easiest for me to speak in German. I am Judith. I represent the Flinta Plenary from Attack Germany. Like we've already said, we started this plenary before this official opening. We spoke with activists from France, Poland, and other countries. I might have to explain what this plenary meant because this was very short notice. We could not create a true safe space but we did have the option to ask men to respect this space for us, for women, for lesbians, for intersexuals, for non-binary people, for transsexuals, and for agender people. Because like we've just heard in our own structures, we still see oppression and we see different privileges. We see cis men that have more privileges. And we also see it in our cooperation. And we feel it in the work that we do. So in Germany, what we did is during every summer university and during every event for Attack Germany is to claim a safe space where we can network together and we can talk to one another. We have some requests that I would like to share with you to all participants of ESU. We love that we have an awareness structure during this summer university like Elise already presented. So whenever there are people that do not feel respected or even discriminated in certain situations, we are grateful for this awareness structure and we want to encourage everyone to use it. We also agreed that we want these kinds of plenaries in the future again. We see it as a need to network together and to empower one another. We have an important demand as well that everyone that participates in this ESU, I want people to look at their privileges and whether they are using their privileges correctly or maybe there are people that are marginalized and that you, you can lift up and that you can empower as well. So everyone has the same opportunities and chances. We have a quote. Each day is a flint a day and each session is a flint a day. That is important to us every single event that you participate. Always underline the feminist aspects and the Flinta aspects in your events as well. Think about them, address them, talk about them, encourage people to think about them. Because the world that we live in, we've seen a tendency towards the right and we see that mm, we see attacks against women, against people of the Flinta community. We see backlashes and we see Flinta people that suffer first. 
And we need to implement that in our political practice and in our political sphere. I hope for all of us to have a good ASU. Thank you very much. Alors, je vais passer la parole à notre... I will pass the floor to our second last speaker. We will talk about international solidarity. Our speaker is from Madrid and currently living in Geneva. She participated in the feminist strike in Switzerland. There were many participants during that strike. She is also in contact with other feminist strikes worldwide. I pass the floor to our second last speaker. Good night. Um, the moving forward of feminism is a fact that nobody can deny. A movement that from now on any force will be able to stop. Women have become a factor that has to be taken into account. This is not me. This is Avril La, uh, de Saint Croix in 1907. She's a feminist, uh, a French feminist that was born in Carouche. I recently knew that she was born in Switzerland. It's the neighborhood next to my building. And uh, I realized how little I knew about feminism, although I have read hundreds of books and I had passed all my exams. In 2018, I was unemployed and facing a burnout. Shit, let's call it by its name. I was facing a depression due to professional harassment. Uh, as I'm living in Switzerland in 2018, in the summer uh, of 2018, ASU was happening in Grenoble. And I have to thank the, organi the organizers and the speakers of that moment because being a person that had not never been organized, they encouraged me, empowered me, and gave me tools to be today here. I don't know how uh, it happened. At that moment, I was not uh, uh, thinking how I was going to transit and how I was going to be able to, to work on local basis, national basis, and international basis to make a strike in, in, uh, in Switzerland. In Geneva, we gathered 70,000 people. In the whole Switzerland, 5,100 uh, people. This might be a little bit uh, small compared to the strikes that were happening at the same time in, in Spain with six million people in the streets. But in a country of eight million people, 5,000 people on the streets in the, in the country that they are uh, proud to say that had a peace and, uh, and work contract is a lot. How everything uh, happened? I went to Verona and the movement of Non Una Di Menos gathered 17 uh, different movement strikes in which we gave, as uh, they were saying before, we had a, a safe space to talk among us. We connect the dots, as Sima was saying before, that it's super important how complex systems they work, how we have to connect the dots in between activism and different movements. It is really mandatory that we uh, listen to each other, that we stop digging in our own uh, fights, and we go and expose this ourselves in this kind of, uh, of um, uh, university um, gatherings or other uh, social movement spaces. We need honestly, to go to the places that we feel uncomfortable, because it's there where we are going to find how our movement, how our fight is going to uh, cross the borders, is going to cross the paths, is going to do something different. Everybody has uh, something to say in, a, in, in everybody's fight, and it is, it is a need that we go to this link and we talk about this and we empower and embrace the fights of the others. In France, in, uh, sorry, in Switzerland, in Geneva, we uh, say in French, so, 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 solidarité avec les femmes du monde entier. Solidarity with every woman in the world. That was uh, amazing. I wanted to do so when I was in this uh, event in Verona, fighting against the, the pro-life that were gathering uh, 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 
at, at, at this venue and there were thousands of people in the in the street saying no to anti uh, abortism uh, movement I said like hey I'm going to use this space to make an invitation to everybody to come to Geneva because on the on the 14th of uh, June we are having a, a strike if you want to w know why is the 14th of June you are invited tomorrow to the feminist strike uh, meeting that we are having at 10 uh, so on the 14th of June we are doing this, why not having a trans-border, uh, trans-feminist uh, meeting on the 15th in between all the, all the different uh, strikes. So the, the, the women, they came and they uh, marched with us. Then I went to the United Nations because I found that it was uh, amazing to have uh, all these people in the in this United Nations Square uh, while the Human Rights Council was happening. By the way, in French it's still uh, named uh, Droit de l'Homme, and maybe you have to change that. So, <laughs> on the side. Uh, so I, I found that it was amazing to have all these uh, different women representing their, uh, their, their strike movements gather in the United Nations and ask the staff from the United Nations to come and, uh, and join us. Because they are also suffering harassment. I suffer harassment. They are also suffering all the problems that feminism can solve and can give solutions. When I came and I talked to the director general, he said, like, oh, okay, we are going to let them go on solidarity and march with Swiss women on solidarity. So I said, like, what? On solidarity? That's something wrong. If the director general of the United Nations in Geneva is saying solidarity, I need to rethink this. So I said, like, uh, well, they are not coming on solidarity. They have to be responsible. They are coming in responsibility because they are making the people in Switzerland with uh, all the problems that they have, all the same vulner vulnerabilities uh, that we are suffering in any other country, despite it's one of the uh, most expensive ones in the, in the world. The precariousness in that country is amazing. And these international staff, which uh, were going to march with us on solidarity, they were just left two hours, which was a lot, because they don't have the right, because they don't, cannot get positions when there is a fight, when there is a, um, a conflict in between countries. And I said, like, OK, but this is not a conflict in between countries. They are living in this country. They are making people work for them in this country. How the hell are they coming on solidarity? They have to be responsible and march with us. So I start uh, working on this concept of solidarity that is, is, is casuistic. We, uh, we were saying before, uh, we are solidarity Solidar, solidar, I don't know, solidarios with the people in, uh, in Chile, with the people in, uh, in El Salvador, with the people in Ukraine. But we have to be responsible. And in this uh, global uh, situation that we find ourselves with all the social networks, we have to be responsible. We have to uh, send thousands of letters when a movement says it's not okay with signing. We have to do something from our, our social movements. We have to trust what the, th the people next to me is doing. Maybe I'm not going to be okay with all the with all the letters that they are uh, writing, but they have been uh, working on them. They have had their own consensus. When they achieve so, uh, their, the, the, the motivations that are making these letters, I am not the one coming and saying, oh, I, with this spot or with this coma, I'm not, uh, I, I, I don't agree. Come on, we need to let them pass and we need to support each other. And then there will be moments in which we can have our own conflicts and in between the people on the left and the people of uh, more uh, in the social movements, we can have those debates in between us with respect uh, and on, on safe spaces, but we need to empower, as they were saying before, I'm not going to repeat what the, what the uh, colleagues were saying, we need to empower them, we need to say, hey, this is your fight, let's go, and I'm behind you. I'm behind you, or next to you, when we are speaking about racism, we are, uh, when we are speaking about defending, uh, defending um, the, the territory, when, I, when defending, how can I be uh, solidar Solidar, solidaria with the people in Ukraine or even with the people in the border in Russia that are against that. I cannot be solidarity. I have to be responsible and I have to act and I have to act right now. So uh, let's move forward, stop our solidarity and let's go to responsibility. And let's do it also as uh, another th uh, way they, they uh, say in, uh, in the Swiss uh, March. Uh, strong with proud and feminism in rage. 
man, you are involved in this. You have to go and uh, make this movement because it's a social, economic, and, and, uh, and uh, political alternative. You have and you need to find your space here. You can call yourself feminist and find the way to in which you can you can add. I, uh, I I came to the Flint uh, workshop before, and they were asking to have a non cisgender men meeting. We were going to be among us. We needed to talk among us what we are expecting, and I'm always surprised why if there is this. Why is never a group of men saying like, hey, why are not we invited here? How can we add something to this? How can we be next to them? How can we help them and be at their backs? If feminism since 1907 is a, is a movement that is not going to stop now that we are in a turning point, the paradigm is, a, is, is starting to change again. We need you to, ste to, to step uh, forward and say, we are on your sides and join us. Uh, there has been two times in the in the past years in which I was thinking, okay, they got it. COVID-19. I, I saw it like a, you know, a, an opportunity. People that had uh, windows are were clapping for public health. I said, like, okay, there is no more need of going down the streets to protect public health. Then we realized that the people that were clapping, the people that were uh, talking at the moment, it was the people that we already knew that public health was uh, was needed. Uh, it was not the people uh, that is not here today. It's not the people that is coming with us to the to the demonstrations. Second time is the second uh, big shock of this uh, past year, the, the war on Ukraine. Uh, what are we going to do? We have read already this. Everybody that has uh, read history uh, is reading the newspapers and is saying like, whoa, again, this happened, this happened, this happened. Let our egos on the side. Let's do something. Let's be responsible with our activism. Let's embrace the other people's uh, uh, fights. And when we see a hole in which maybe not us, but we can put somebody else's uh, needs and somebody else's um, uh, demands on the table, let's do it for them. Let's amplify our voices and let's uh, march all together for re, re, re responsibility international. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Noemi. Thanks, Noemi. Final speech for tonight. Abi Babi Dad. from the Ligue de droit de l'homme in France. She's fighting for the right to vote for foreigners in France. Over to you. Thank you. It's the first time I speak in a European gathering and the first time I speak in English. So I hope that you will understand my English. Um, let me start by expressing a big thanks to Attack Germany that has taken the initiative of this European gathering. The LDH, La Ligue des Droits de l'Homme, we are still uh, talking about the name <laughs> in, in turn, maybe to change, we don't know. So the French League of Human Rights was associated from the beginning to the construction of this event and we've participated steadily to the International Steering Committee. Our presence here is part of our constant practice of exchange with those who organize resistance, who mobilize for alternatives. This year, in May, we were in Matera at the Sabir Festival, where we have discussed in a European framework the issues around migration and international solidarity. We will be in Florence in November on the 20th anniversary of the first European Social Forum, thanks to our Italian friends. No doubt it will provide an appropriate space to think about strategies and elaborate possible answers in a context of recurring systemic crisis and the expansion of the far right in our continent and beyond. And of course, we are here in Mohen Gladbach. 
In the realm of the defense of human rights, the LDH is the world's oldest civic organization created in 1898. Since its very beginning, it has been acting in defense of all rights, civil and political rights, economic and social rights, cultural rights. Ever since, the LDH includes in its scope the emerging domains where human rights are concerned. The claim of the effective access to all rights for all is a fruitful approach for strengthening mobilizations and fighting for emancipation. Presently, with the destruction of ecosystems, the demand of sustainable, inclusive, and solidarity-based development is a new imperative that the right-based approach reinforces. In our societies, everyone talks about human rights, but not in the same sense. And how the issue of rights have to be addressed is at the heart of the political struggle in our societies. There are three opposing ways of thinking about rights for three different conceptions of what makes up society. The extreme right and the right in a process of radicalization are promoting identities defined as to exclude parts of a society. They argue that our societies cannot guarantee rights for all, that rights can only be ensured when some are excluded. Their imagination to name who is to be excluded is limitless. It will often be migrants, foreigners, recently arrived people, Muslim, LGBTIQ plus communities. We gathered here know that the worst lies in societies built along such an approach. With the neoliberal management of the last decades, the approach of rights implemented in our societies is different. Their promoters tell the role of institutions to, is to ensure the condition of equality through civil and political rights, the rule of law and open education system, and not to ensure the effective access to rights. It is up to individuals those equipped to do what is necessary to make their own access to economical, social, cultural rights effective, and now through good environmental behavior. The results of this approach are the considerable number of people in vulnerable situations left aside, with a deepening of poverty traps and rising inequalities. We are the third camp, radically different from the other two. What we want is a society characterized by the, effect, by the effective access to all rights for all especially political and voting rights for all, including foreign residents. We want a society built with the tools provided by solidarity, inclusive, inclusiveness, equality, and of course, democracy. Over the coming days, we will discuss about our answers to the challenges our approach is facing at present. How can we rely on the mobilizations for climate change for civil liberties, for women's rights, to build such a society. We hope our exchanges will enrich our collective responses in order to fight the two approaches to rights that we have to face in the specific ways needed for each. To conclude, I share with you Antonio Gramsci's aphorism, which unfortunately applies so well to present times and which sets the agenda for our debates in the days to come. Let us be able to combine a pessimism of the intellect with an optimism of the will. I would like, um, as we are here, um, we all are here uh, fighting for peace in the world. I would like to talk, in, and we are in a European gathering, I would like to tell you about Stop Settlements. Stop Settlements is an European citizen's initiative to end trade with the settlements in Palestine. LDH and ATAC support this petition. So, uh, help us to reach one million signatures to ban trade in settlement projects. You can find the petition on internet, hashtag stop settlements. Thank you.
Uh, on va finir la soirée. So we're finishing now with song, with our good friends. First of all, a big round of applause for the interpreters. Thanks for staying to the end of this evening. So we'll see you from 10 a.m. for the forums and workshops. And let's come a bit early to meet up at the stands outside, have a coffee. So thank you, everybody. Now we'll finish with a few minutes of song. This song was written by Steve Forbert from the States of America. Good planets are hard to find, temperate zones and tropic climes. True currents in thriving seas Winds blowing through breathing trees Strong ozone and safe sunshine Good planets are hard to find Gute Planeten sind eine Seltenheit Mit Herbst und Frühling jeder Jahreszeit Im Sommer heiß und in den Wintern kalt, mit warmen Zonen diesen Regenwald, kühlen Schatten und mit Fruchtbarkeit. Gute Planeten sind eine Seltenheit. Good planets are in demand, clean beaches and sparkling sand. Erschwinglich bist du auch nicht betucht Gut durchweht von angenehmem Wind Mit schönen Stränden, die noch sauber sind Halbwegs leer und noch nicht ausgebucht Gute Planeten, die sind schwer gesucht Schleuder im Himmel ragt Mit klaren Flüssen und mit weiter Sicht An Energie und Nahrung mangelt's nicht Ergiebig lange noch nicht abgenagt Gute Planeten, die sind sehr gefragt Der Verstand ist blind Keiner hört noch zu Blöd wie Menschen sind Bald Friedhof zu, and the mind don't know if the heart.
heart can see Let the blind man go To his destiny Good planets are scars and few Earth warms and carry boo Strong food chains and tasty meals Textiles and plants that eat Iron mountains and skies of blue Good planets are scars and few Gute Planeten, die sind ziemlich rar Wer einen findet, bleibt am besten da Zweifels, glaub mir, es ist wahr, gute Planeten, die sind ziemlich rar. Ich hätte noch ein Geschenk. I've got one more thing. It's a song for attack. Ich habe für Sie diverse soziale Bewegungen. I've written songs for various social movements. And now it's Attack's turn. That's my song for Attack. Attack, das heißt, nimm es nicht einfach hin. Im Leben steckt mehr als man dir bietet drin. Dann willst du mehr als man dir gibt. Pass auf, dass man dich nicht auf Seite schiebt. Wer dich am besten damit zeigst du Mut. Warte nicht, ob irgendwer was für dich tut. Wessen Interessen sind genau mit Einfach zu Überhört man dich Wer wichtig ist, bist du Wenn man dich über den Tisch zieht Und dich Ohnmacht quält Wer dich und zeigt Dass dir Mut nicht fehlt Irgendwer was für dich tut. Wessen 
was heißt, schau über den Horizont. Sieh mehr als jeder, der am Pool sich sonnt. Blick hinter die Kulissen, deck Schmutz und Schwindel auf und nimm zur Streitvermeidung nichts in Kauf. Warte nicht, ob irgendwer was für dich tut. Wessen Interessen sind genau mit deinen gleich. Zieh am selben Strang, dann kriegst du viel erreicht. Attack heißt, füg dich nicht so einfach rein. Besser werden, dann kommt's nicht von allein. Nimm so in Angriff, dass dich keiner bremsen kann. Glaub nicht, es käme von selber irgendwann. Wer dich am besten damit zeigst. Ja, ich finde es immer ganz gut, sich für ein Geschenk zu bedanken und das wollte ich nochmal machen, weil äh, Gerd Schinkel ist wirklich jemand, der auch gerade hier in der Nähe im rheinischen Braunkohlerevier seit circa fünf Jahren den Widerstand wirklich permanent begleitet. Er hat, glaube ich, über 300 oder bald 400 Lieder zu dem Widerstand allein geschrieben und äh, ich wollte nochmal auch den Namen hervorheben, weil er steht ja sonst nirgendwo. Und wenn man selbst den Namen nennen muss, nicht so ganz gut. Also Gerd Schinkel, vielen Dank. <lacht> 